Thank you. You may be seated. Sorry about that. <laughs> Good afternoon, Pioneer families, friends, and guests. My name is Lisa Burns, and I am the proud principal of these fantastic young people seated before you. Thank you for joining us in celebrating the class of 2023. Before we begin, I would like to start off by expressing sincere gratitude to the many people who helped make this day possible. Our custodial, maintenance, ground staff, secretaries, our tech team for their outstanding work in getting us set up for this beautiful ceremony, our outstanding teachers, support staff, and class sponsors that inspired and guided our students throughout their academic careers and helped with a variety of events along the way. Our exchange students, Maria, Frida, Georgia, and David, for leading the class in today. Our superintendent, Colette Moody, and the Board of Education for joining us. And last, but certainly not least, our amazing Crosal Lexington Band under the direction of Mr. Kevin Zarnick. Please join me in giving these groups a round of applause. At this time, I'll invite you to please stand and face the flag for the playing of our national anthem. Thank you, Mr. Zarnick. At this time, I would like to invite senior scholar Catherine Conley to join us on stage to introduce our commencement speaker. Catherine plans to attend SC4 this fall and transfer to Oakland University to major in English and journalism. Our commencement speaker is Dr. Joshua Guitar. After graduating from Croswell Lexington High School in 2004, Joshua completed his bachelor's degree in communication at Adrian College and earned his master's and PhD in communication from Wayne State University. Joshua currently serves as an assistant professor of communication at Keene University in New Jersey, where he teaches where he teaches classes in rhetoric, critical media studies, and political com communication. Joshua's research has been featured in communication journals like Critical Studies in Media Communication, Communication and Democracy, and Western Journal of Communication. In 2021, Joshua published Dissent, Discourse, and Democracy, Whistleblowers as Sites of Political Contestation with Lexington Books. Joshua's work has earned multiple awards, including the James Madison Prize for Outstanding Research in First Amendment Studies and the Top Paper Award from the Political Communication Division of the National Communication Association. Please welcome Croslex alum, Dr. Josh Guitar. Thank you, Catherine, for the very kind introduction. Uh, too generous, I would say, but very nice nonetheless. 
Ms. Bombard told me you'd be a really good communication studies major, and you did not disappoint. So if you want my business card after the ceremony, come and find me. Thank you also to the entire class of 2023. Make no mistake, this is your day. This is your celebration. I'm simply honored to be a part of it. Thank you for allowing me to speak before you today. Thank you also to everyone who made this day possible. Um, I extend thanks to the entire community. These types of events are community driven. We have custodians and librarians, we have, uh, administrators and staff, a lot of people who make this day possible, who allow our graduates to get to this point, friends, family, and especially teachers. Thank you to the teachers who have imparted one of those, their most valuable assets to these graduates, their knowledge. I think there's a few teachers here who were still here when I was here nearly two decades ago, scratching their heads wondering how I got invited to come back here. I'll say when I received my invitation, I was excited to speak. I was perhaps a little more excited to come terrorize Mrs. Ovell again. <laughs> Love you. Special thank you to Ms. Bombard and Ms. Burns for extending the invitation for me to speak. Although my invitation, it seems, was the only one that said to dress like a sorcerer. <laughs> so perhaps the joke is on me this time. Now that I'm sharing this space with you, the question is what advice to give, what things to say, how can I capture the attention of 18-year-olds for one last lecture before they leave this place? I'll be honest with you, graduates, nearly two decades ago when I sat where you are, I could not get out of this town fast enough. I can say that two decades later being here, it feels good to be home, so thank you. There's a comfort in being back where you are from. <clears throat> this advice question that I've uh, been tasked with for today is not one that is one that I face fairly often in my career as a professor. Seemingly at the end of each academic year, graduating seniors fill my office, not just with themselves, but with their fears, their anxieties, their excitement, with decisions similar to the ones you're facing today. I do not have all the answers, but I have over the years developed 10 talking points that I think will work well for you here today also. I promise you though, that despite this fancy cape, bless you, someone who's worked a lot of blue collar jobs is under this doctoral regalia. So whether you're going to college or trade school or starting an apprenticeship or starting your career or you have absolutely no idea what to do next, I respect all of those positions and I think my advice can help. The first advice I always give to students wondering about their futures is to forget about their careers and go backpack Europe. Assuming that like them, you want something a little more pragmatic I'll move to my second talking point. As a scholar of political media, political rhetoric, political communication, do not become a scholar of political rhetoric, political media, and political communication. I watch and write about cable news and politics. It is as exhausting as it sounds. More seriously. <clears throat> You will all be failures. 10%, only 10% of New Year's resolutions endure an entire year. 65% of businesses close within 10 years of opening. 25% of first year college students do not persist to year two. And 40% of college students that start a program do not finish it. You will face a lot of decisions in life that carry the weight, the possibility of failure. Try anyway. My fourth point. 
The world is, can be a cold and cruel place, and it does not care about you. We are but mere specks on a giant rock plummeting through space. The timeline of, humans, uh, of humanity's existence on this earth represents 0.00% of our entire earth's timeline. Despite great minds and great speakers and great activists that have come before you, we still have not solved major world problems like racism, sexism, world hunger, poverty, war. You'll look in the mirror, you'll look in the stars, you'll look on the shores of Lake Huron and you will feel insignificant. insignificant. Go matter anyway. My fifth point. Your hearts will all be broken. 50% of marriages do not last. Americans spend $10 billion each year on divorce. You will give love and not get it in return. You will grieve the loss of family friends, family pets, and family. You will realize that there's nothing more raw and true than facing mortality. Go love anyway. See, I'm not here today before you. I wasn't asked to speak today because of my successes that you heard Catherine speak about earlier. I'm here because I have failed. I know failure. I'll give you my favorite example, one of my favorite examples. I went out for lunch with my dissertation advisor. The dissertation is the thing that allows me to wear this fancy cape. We were having lunch as we always or typically did on a weekly basis. The conversation began with small talk and laughter and chit chat. At the first pause in our conversation, she looked at me and she, sh she said, Josh, do you have a fireplace? I didn't understand the question, but I said, yes. I do, I have this beautiful uh, glass door, wood stove, furnace thing, it heats my house, I love the aesthetic, I love the way it smells, I love the way it looks. She reached into her bag, she pulled out my recent chapter that I'd given her a week before to review of my dissertation. She slammed it on the table and she said, burn this. There is nothing here worth saving, you must start over. I can't begin to quantify how much time I'd put into that chapter. It was 40 pages. It was months of work. I had to start over. A year prior, she had asked me, Josh, when we start this dissertation, do you want just a good dissertation that will allow you to get a professor's job, or do you want an excellent dissertation? I chose the latter which means or meant that I had to be ready for harsh criticism. I had to be ready to write a bunch of words that were gonna get thrown in the trash. I had to be ready to fail. You too will soon face situations that bring similar anxieties. Face them, challenge them. Now, I do not intend to ask you or want you to fail or grieve or lose on purpose. I'm back. That's not the point. I do have one trick, my sixth piece of advice, that can help avoid most of these failures. When you need it, ask for help. We cannot do this alone. You are surrounded by a very strong community who has helped you get here. Recognize that. Know that whatever you're doing in your future is an investment of your time. It's an investment of your energy. It's an investment of your money. But something like an education, whether that's in a trade school, an apprenticeship, or in college, is not a product that we can purchase at a store. This is a, a vast misconception our society has. I wish to correct it here. If I go into a store and I give the clerk money for a t-shirt, I walk out of that store with that t-shirt. I can take it back if it doesn't fit. Education is not like this. You're not paying for a degree. You're not paying for a diploma. 
You are paying for access to expertise. Each of your mentors will have an office. Each of, that office, each of those offices will have chairs. Sit in them. You pay for access to that space. Getting an education is like paying for a parking spot or paying for a gym membership. I can pay for it, but if I don't park in the spot, if I don't go to the gym, I don't reap the benefits. Your mentors want to see you in their office. Go to their office hours. Ask them questions. You're paying for access to them. If, however, after these moments you've asked for help, you've done everything you thought you could, there will still be times when you feel like you've made all the right decisions and yet you are still in the wrong place. Failure, defeat. Feel those moments. Understand them. They are what will allow you to get to the point that when you do succeed, when you do accomplish your goals, because you will, you will thrive. You'll know how great that feeling is because you'll understand the opposite. I mentioned in my opening that it felt good to be home. There's a comfort in being here. That comfort only comes because over the last two decades, I have felt at times discomfort. I know what the opposite feeling feels like. So when you're faced with those tough moments, they will shape you, recognize this. And know that for my seventh point, Discomfort brings growth, okay? Discomfort will bring growth. I promised you 10 points. I have three more, I'll make them brief. If everything I've said today still fails you, number eight, just go backpack Europe. Number nine, always leave your audience wanting more. And finally, number 10, Thank you very much, Dr. Guitar. I gotta be honest, being a math major following a communications major is intimidating, so bear with me. Before introducing the 2023 senior scholars, I just wanted to take a, a minute to congratulate the class of 2023 myself. You might not remember, but all of you and I arrived at CLHS together in the fall of 2019, so you'll always be a special class to me because we've been together these past four years. It hasn't been the easiest four. I have a part in that probably for you. Sorry about that. You, you got to high school and education changed forever. In fact, all across the country, the class of 2023 are referred to as the COVID class. Educational researchers consistently talk about your class in terms of what you've lost and how you're behind the other classes that came before you. That may be true for some schools, but I respectfully degree, disagree when it comes to you. From your freshman year to your junior year, you raised your composite score on the PSAT SAT test by an average of 99 points. That's the highest gain by a single class in at least 10 years. 27 of you. Twenty-seven of you have already earned certifications through the Career Center this year, and six of you have gone above and beyond that to earn your CDL, and the testing isn't over yet. Your band... <laughs> your band has earned Division I ratings this year and plenty before that, and earned a spot at the State Band Festival this year. You also have senior band members in the audience today who arranged their own original music for concerts this year. Your drama shined on the stage this year in outstanding performances of Radium Girls and Mamma Mia. Two of you became Eagle Scouts this year. Athletically, you have won BWAC championships, district championships, regional championships, and had several individual and team state qualifiers. Senior Jalen Isaac won the individual state championship in girls powerlifting. 
and our competitive cheer team won the first MHSAA state team championship. We also have a total of at least five seniors who signed their letter of intent to compete at the collegiate level. Your class is leaving high school with a total of an astonishing 535 college credits already completed with this year's AP exams not yet scored. Your senior leaders in student council, NHS and SAD, completed several community service projects and raised thousands of dollars for pioneers in need. Your yearbook had record sales this year and features cover photos from this very stadium and was themed where we're from, exemplifying your pride in your school and your community. And in my 23 years of being an educator, you're the first class I've ever seen band together and work so hard and even motivate the underclassmen to work with you towards the common goal of getting a couple of teachers as well as your principal a pie in the face at lunchtime. <laughs> Through all the adversity and challenges beyond your control, you've come out winners time and time again. We could not be more proud of all that you have accomplished. You have proven them all wrong, that you're not behind, you're far ahead, because pioneers are leaders, and from this day forward, you're forever a pioneer. Congratulations. At this time, I'm proud to recognize our 15 senior scholars. Our senior scholars are given our top seniors based on a combination of their GPA and SAT scores. Senior scholars, please stand to be recognized as I call your name. Please hold your applause until all 15 have been announced. The class of 2023 senior scholars are Tyler Chisholm, Catherine Conley, Andrew Durecka, Noel Golda, Taylor Hendrick, Robert Loomis, Donovan McDonald, Jaden McWhirter, Gracie Neal, Paris Perigee, Samuel Rickerman, Brooklyn Schultz, Grace Stilson, Reed Stoyan, and Jonah Trigger. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2023 Senior Scholars. At this time, I would like to welcome our valedictorian, Jaden McWhirter, to the stage to address his class. Jaden plans to finish his associate's degree at SC4, then transfer to another university, yet decided to study computer science. On behalf of the senior class, thanks to all the parents and their families who have shown their support to us Tirelessly, 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 each step of the way. Thank you to the staff for making this place welcoming. I can tell that you guys genuinely care for all of us. Thank you for making, or thank you to the administration for making this place the absolute best you can in creating the Pioneer family. And finally, thank you to the students for actually being here today. None of us would be here without you. I always wanted to be the valedictorian. I mean, like, who doesn't want to be the first? I, I, want, I thought it was something achievable. I thought it would be nice. I was wrong. Standing up on this stage, I realized that any, other, any of you in this crowd would be a much better substitute for valedictorian and the class, speaker of the class of 2023 than me. I arrived in the school district just two years ago. While most of you have been here your whole lives, you've lived as pioneers the entire time. Any one of you are better than me. Any one of you are better suited for this role than me. I regret taking the time to not form any kinds of relationships with most of you. I regret not being a part of this community. I regret that I was not more involved. I'm sure that there are some of you out here that feel the same way. Well, we are lucky enough that this is just the beginning. 
we still have our future, our chance. After today, our choices have a real impact on the rest of our lives and our relationships. I think we will all, let us use our memories that school gave us to foster our future relationships and to guide our choices. I think we all remember our first day of elementary school and trying to make that first friend. Man, did we make some weird games with them. I hope we all remember the bad memories too. Our first fight with your friend, those final words on March 13th, see you in two weeks. Well, that was a lie. We didn't see everyone until months later through the screen of a computer. We lost the second half of freshman year and our sophomore year was kind of ruined. Do we let this separate us from our friends or did we adapt and push through it? I hope that everyone realizes that our lives are so much more than school. And not to say that school is not important, but the people we get to know around us will help us walking forward in the future. We are the pioneers. We will push through it. Thank you. Thank you, Jaden. I would now like to welcome our salutatorian, Tyler Chisholm, to the stage to address his class. Tyler is still working through his choices and working on finalizing his plans after graduation, but I have no doubt that he will follow his dreams. Kind of nervous, sorry. Not everyone gets to stand up here on stage to present their own opinions and ideas, to voice their own thoughts, and I, I see that as unjust. It's unjust that you just get to hear the perspective of the top few students. Everyone had their own experiences. Everyone has their own ideas and thoughts. Everyone deserves a voice. All of us worked hard to be here. So I made it my goal in creating this speech to include as many of you as possible in its writing. One Friday in April, I went around to every English class, and I tried to speak to each and every senior. I posed the question, if you could give a speech at graduation, what would you say? Advice, memories, really anything at all, as long as it didn't get me kicked off the stage. And I wanted to take all of those responses and combine them into one big grand speech that would encapsulate the class of 2023 as a whole. The responses were varied. Some gave me a few words, others wrote paragraphs, and others just didn't say anything at all. But nonetheless, from this point forward, this is not my speech, this is our speech, constructed from what you wanted to be said. From this point forward, this speech is written by you, or at least those of you who chose to be a part of this. But before I start, someone wanted me to tell you all to reduce, reuse, and recycle. I couldn't figure out a way to fit that in, so it's good advice. <laughs> uh, our whole lives has felt like this moment was what we were leading up to. In kindergarten, seeing all these big kids wearing these silly looking caps and gowns, very silly looking, we knew that eventually it would have to be us. But it was just so far away. It wasn't anything to worry about. We just lived life. Most kids take elementary school for granted, not realizing that the simple days of field days, coloring pictures, and long recesses would soon come to an end. We suffered through those ever so awkward years of middle school. The first crush, acne, Mrs. Fitzpatrick. <laughs> it was a rough time for most of us, but we survived even though we may have lost some of our sanity along the way. And high school, the first homecoming, the first prom. I'm legally obligated to mention COVID. Friday night football games, biding our time until the day we could finally leave. In junior year, we struggled through the SATs. Not because we wanted good scores, but if you remember, we were promised a fridge. <laughs> Still waiting. <laughs> the entire school uniting at our last snow coming assembly against a certain someone we all know and love. Hmm. And of course, I'd be mistaken if I didn't mention the loss of Trey's magnificent mullet. <laughs> it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. We didn't learn much, though. 
at least not in the way that they expected us to. I don't remember every detail of the Revolutionary War. I don't remember the underlying motifs of Hamlet or what a dangling participle is. But I have learned from Ms. Tremel that it's okay to bark at yourself when you make a mistake. <laughs> and from Mr. Corsetti, that you should always show what you love, even if it's a little bit squirrely. And from Mr. Coates, that nothing bad can ever happen in room 116. Never. But, another but, we can't always stay in room 116. The bell has to ring eventually. High school seemed like a peak, and the final stretch before standing here at commencement, finally graduating. But standing here, it doesn't really seem real. 13 years of school accumulating up to this singular moment it's surreal. And in a way, I almost don't want it to happen. We've been waiting for this day forever. But now that's here, it's hard for some of us to let go. High school was so easy compared to what happens next, life. High school was supposed to prepare us for college, for the real world, for becoming adults. But I have never felt so unprepared in my entire life. I've never felt so scared. High school was a place to make mistakes, a place to learn to survive, a place to act as a safe barrier from the real world. But now that we are being thrust upon this world, I still haven't a clue what I'm doing. We all have huge expectations for ourselves. People have expectations for us, and that's OK. But in moments like these, we need to step back and focus on what's happening here and now. We need to appreciate the friends that we've made along the way and the fact that we're here at all. Logic and education don't always teach us the ways of morality and compassion, two things that the world truly lacks in this day of age. But maybe we can be the generation to change that. To incoming students, don't take your time here for granted. Learn from each other and try to put some effort into your classes. Some of us have had to learn the hard way that bad grades can and will ruin college opportunities. Even athletic scholarships can be harder to achieve if you're failing classes. Have fun, but also take some of these moments seriously. Originally, I was going to conclude this speech with a quote from world-renowned poet, lyricist, street performer, and composer, Ice Spice. <laughs> but I'm sorry, it was deemed too inappropriate by the fellows behind me. So I will leave it at this. No matter how you feel about me, I'm truly going to miss each and every single one of you. It was a pleasure being present here with you. And I, I do love all of you, no matter how untrue you think that sounds. High school wasn't always great, but the people, you made it worth every single second. That's it. Thank you, Tyler. Our final senior scholar speech today will be given by Robert Loomis. Robert plans to attend the University of Michigan in the fall to study biological science. Hello, everyone. I am honored moved and grateful to be standing here today to reflect on and celebrate the graduating class of 2023. I would like to first acknowledge my parents who have both played a tremendous role in getting to me where I am today. I am forever grateful for their support in all my life ventures. They have supported me since the very beginning and continue to support the paths I will take next. Today is the day not to only celebrate the obvious grades, awards, and other external markers of value, but also all of the small victories we have achieved. The lessons learned from these experiences will take our class into the future as better equipped people ready to utilize critical thinking to help solve real world problems. As we graduate high school, 
a major milestone has been achieved. And as individuals, we must look to our futures and determine what our next goals are. I have found over the years in high school that perspective is everything. It may seem somewhat easy to identify a goal we may want to achieve, but the challenge, the challenge comes with overcoming the obstacles that stand in the way. A task may seem simple at first glance, but several hours later, that same simple task may turn into a barrier you never thought existed. Barriers are sometimes formed with an underestimation of the tasks at hand, but they can also be constructed by a false perception of reality. The reality of a situation is often missed because of emotions. Placing too much emphasis on what this person said and what this person thinks of another is simply a waste of energy. It is a choice to let a barrier get the best of you and waste energy on the story behind it. Instead, I have found that channeling energy into identifying ways to overcome obstacles by asking questions through self-reflection has proven to be helpful. It is a better way to navigate obstacles and prevent the building of new barriers. All a barrier is, is an unpreferred reality. One method I heard about from author Cy Wakeman is a question that I find asking myself often. What would greatness look like right now? It is a simple question that triggers an almost immediate response. The steps start coming into a person's head of what they need to take to overcome the obstacles they are charged with and lead them to their goal. Taking the first couple steps toward a goal is great, but inevitably we will all soon face failure in one way or another. This failure will feel very different from the trouble we have all experienced in the classroom a time or two because it is up to us to determine the outcome. The actions that follow a considered failed attempt at something are most important when it comes to reaching a goal. Most people flee failure and escape it having learned nothing. We must celebrate our failures just as much as our successes moving forward because it signifies an area that we can grow upon next. This allows us to move through life more skillfully and with greater efficiency. The fear of failure is becoming more and more popular to have, but it should not be feared. By graduating, we have proven our determination and motivation to overcome obstacles. As we look to the future, we are all diverging on our own paths with new obstacles. Our success become what as individuals we define it as. Whether it is a sporty new car or a loving relationship, it is up to you. The choices we make next will be fueled by our own ambition and our goals will be something to reach for. What will you make of these opportunities you are presented with? Many of us crave the opportunity that comes next to leave this mark on our world. The time has come to work for our goals and reach success. It is up to us to move forward in this world and not dwell on the past. The truth of the matter is the world we live in is constantly changing and barriers are ever present. We are the class of 2023, and we are ready to move into this world more skillfully than the generations before us. Thank you, and congratulations to all. Thank you, Robert. I would now like to introduce our 2023 executive board members. The executive board members take on a variety of roles and projects throughout the year to ensure the school is running smoothly and the students are having fun. Please stand and be recognized as I announce your name. The class of 2023 executive board members are Aubrey Connolly, Noel Golda, Robert Loomis, Brooklyn Schultz, and Grace Stilson.
At this time, I will welcome executive board members Brooklyn Schultz and Grace Stilson to address their class. Brooklyn plans to attend CMU to study biomedical sciences. Grace plans to attend the University of Tennessee to study mechanical engineering. Good afternoon, everyone. First, we would like to say thank you all for coming. I'd like to thank my family and friends for always believing in me and being by my side and all the teachers and staff at the school that have helped me to become who I am. I would like to thank my friends and family who have stayed close to me through all my adventures over the past four years and the teachers and staff who believed in me and pushed me to be the very best to achieve this moment. But most of all, we would like to thank all of you that have gone through this journey with us. We would like to take the rest of you on a rewind of the past four years, starting in 2019, our freshman year. We got to experience all of our first together, a trip across the parking lot to a new adventure, our first football games, our first school dances, our first pep assemblies, and our first time being one of the big kids. We were already dreaming of the day when we would cross the stage to receive our diplomas. It seemed like it would take forever. However, the world had different plans. Traveling forward to March, we faced our first ever worldwide pandemic. Cutting short our freshman year, we all believed this would be the best thing ever, a longer summer break. However, we didn't expect the effect this would have on all of our lives. We were, the, we were one of the rare classes that had to experience the battles of finishing our first year of high school online. Fast forward to sophomore year and our school was divided. Last names A through M would be in school while N through Z would be online, flipping back and forth every day. For one of the first times, we weren't experiencing the first bell of a new school year as one class. We lived in a time where the same people that have always been by our sides were no longer there. As a class, we pushed through, seeing the light nearing the end of the tunnel. Junior year, the year of reunion. We made some of our best memories in fear of being told to stay home again. This would be our most stressful year, especially preparing for the dreaded SAT and starting college preparation. With junior year, we were able to experience our first prom, varsity sports, and the newfound power of officially being upperclassmen. With the final months of school, we couldn't wait to start the next year, our final year of high school, our senior year. Now here we are, senior year. We arrived on the first day, realizing this is the final stretch. We spent the year feeling on top of the world. We were the oldest in the school, ones younger classmen looked up to, looking at the day when they will be in our shoes. When the time drew closer to today, the realization settles, that we had more lasts than first. Our last adventure, our last football game, our last school dance, our last pep assembly, our last time being one of the big kids, our last time together as a class of 2023. After we walk today, we invoke on a new journey, one without each other on our own. As scary as this may seem, we have all been preparing each other for this since we first met as kids. We challenge one another every day to become better people. We've overcome many challenges and created relationships and friendships that will last us a lifetime. As we move forward, I hope you do the same at the next stop on your journey of life. So here's to the class of 23, and may your new journey be even better than this one. And in the wise words of Taylor Swift, next chapter. Thank you, Brooklyn and Grace. At this time, please welcome our superintendent, Mrs. Colette Moody. Thank you, Ms. Burns. Board of Education members, faculty, parents, community members, and especially the graduates of the class of 2023. It is my honor and privilege to be a part of the celebration of our graduates of Croswell Lexington Community Schools. Today's commencement signifies many things. It signifies the ending of one journey and the beginning of another. Throughout the past 13 years, you've had so many experiences from your first day of kindergarten, making friends, learning to read, attending homecoming parades and dances, learning to solve algebraic equations and writing research papers, enjoying the camaraderie of being part of a club 
or a sports team, learning to drive. Some of these things are fun. Some of these things require hard work and dedication, but you did it. Bless you. You put in the work every day and you did it. Today's ceremony also signifies the joining together of two communities, Croswell and Lexington. In May of 1948, 75 years ago this month, an election was held and the communities committed to joining together and the Croswell Lexington School District was created. For 75 years, our Croswell Lexington community has held strong to that commitment and support to each other and to our students. It's a true privilege to be a part of this tremendous community and to have the opportunity to give back. Graduates, take a moment, take a deep breath, and take it all in. Look around Pioneer Stadium. Look at everyone around you, your family members here to support you. Look at your friends, your classmates, your teachers and administrators. These are the people in your Pioneer community who have supported you on this journey and will continue to support you on the next stage of your journey. This journey is only the start of the opportunities that await for you. I can honestly say that I am amazed at each and every one of you. Amazed at the talent, the athleticism, the knowledge, the hard work ethic, your strong personal beliefs, and what all of you bring to our community. Passion to be heard, passion to be successful, passion to help others. Please continue to hold on to that passion and seize the opportunities that lie in front of you. You can do anything and accomplish anything you want and desire. Work hard, stay committed to your goals and dreams, and go for it. Please know that as you journey forward, you will always have the continued support of your pioneer community for as long as you need us. Parents, guardians, pioneer staff, congratulations to you as well. You teamed up and stayed committed to help these young people as they entered our doors at Croswell Lexington Community Schools. And here we are today at graduation. 2023 graduates, we are all so proud of you. I congratulate you and I wish you all of your success and happiness in your future endeavors. Thank you. With all of the powers bestowed upon me by the Board of Education, I hereby grant each one of you all of the rights and privileges associated with a high school diploma. Mr. Vestich, the assistant principal, will present the class of 2023. Ms. Burns and the Board of Education will confer the diplomas. The class of 2023 will now prepare to receive their diplomas. Jaden McWhorter. <laughs> Tyler Chisholm. <laughs> Robert Loomis. Andrew Dureka. Yeah. 
Grace Stilson. Brooklyn Schultz. <laughs> Catherine Conley. Gracie Neal. Jonah Trigger. <laughs> Taylor Hendrick. <laughs> Reed Stoyan. Samuel Rickerman. <laughs> Noel Golda. <laughs> Paris Perigee. Donovan McDonald. Yeah. Mitchell Geiger. Yeah. Chloe Schaefer. Natalie Yankee. <laughs> Elad Coggle. <laughs> Marlena Burns. Jared Walker. Jada Amon. Carl Shin. Noah Inahosa. Aiden Wilkinson. Zachary Wanarowitz. Brandon Bittner. So 
Jackson Gonzalez. Emilio Martinez. Julio Solis. Ilera Rankin. Isabella Piscina. Eliana White. Elena Zielinski. Jalen Isaac. Kathleen Hunter. Abigail Levitt. Santana Horning. Haley Owens. Aubrey Connolly. Kendalyn McGarvey. <laughs> Cheyenne Hillock. <laughs> Jacob Isles. Nolan Moore. Gavin Huff. Bradley Danielson. Emily Hardy. Rosie White. Ryan Radke. Olivia Bowlesby. Landon Butler. Lauren McKay.
Lainey Seppo. Matthew Morrison. Ryan Quant. Tyler Long. Sierra Nikowski. Swaylin Green. Charles Shin. Garrett Trendy. Hannity Truscott. Julie Van Camp. Kaylee Banky. Christina Fleshman. Liliana Goodman. Isabella Cern. Devana Bauer. Finn Mayfield. <laughs> Amelia Kritzman. <laughs> Dakota Pratt. Bradley Jacobs. <laughs> Ethan Newby. <laughs> Abigail Bales. Alexandra Penny. Ronnie Watkins. Rachel Bales. Gabriel Torres. <laughs> Jesse Clark. <laughs> Matt.
Mallory McKenzie. Joslyn Powell. Cassidy Seaman. <laughs> Elena Martinez. <laughs> Claire Coe. Gabriella Day. Mag Magdalene Killingback. Emma Six. Maya Peggy, Peggy. <laughs> Selena Macias. <laughs> Jessica Krozik. Troy Livingston. James Witham. Henry Lutons. Stephen Papish. Patrick McNabb. Owen Hall. Evan Olajar. <laughs> Andrew Zankus. <laughs> Dylan Roach. Wyatt Ryan. Marshall Ryan. Stephen Matthews. <laughs> Trey McAllister.
Colby Irwin. Lane Hartman. Logan Allen. Gavin Vaughn. Kyle Blaschel. Brad Benneker. Stephen Furchaw. Juliana Kelch. Jesse Straffen. Sarah Wormlinger. Nicholas Cutler. Ethan King. Dana Gardner. Marissa Mott. Lydia Chauvin. Sarah Johnson. Landry Gillette. Shaley Kading. Caden Hines. Alexis Kirshner. Kobe Stribling. Kylie Stribling. Aiden Dove. Julian Day. Trevor Soul. Benito Mendoza.
Drew Hosterman. Colin Campbell. Zachary Cratch. Trey Kolakovich. Can we all please give a hand to the class of 2023? Congratulations, everyone. We're almost there. Now I'd like to welcome senior scholar Taylor Hendrick to the stage to present the class of 2023. Taylor attending Central Michigan University in the fall to study dietetics. Just a reminder to graduates that we'll proceed immediately toward the scoreboard for the cap toss picture after the recessional and then you can go meet with your families. Will the class of 2023 please stand? Seniors, move your tassels from the right side to the left, signifying your official graduation. I present to you the Croswell Lexington High School class of 2023. With a future in our hands. 